To quote British novelist Virginia Woolf, one cannot think well, love well, sleep well if one has not dined well. And to that point, today we'll be focusing not only on some great library programs and updates, but a little bit on fresh, delicious, and yummy food. Hello and welcome to the spring 2012 edition of Beyond Books. I'm your Beyond Books host, Laura Liddicote, and today we'll be welcoming three very special guests. Julie Farkas, our Novi Public Library Director, Chef Steve Allen from Stephen Rocky's Restaurant, and Margie Carp Oprah from the Novi Public Library as well. Now to start our discussion, I welcome our own Library Director, Julie Farkas. Welcome, Julie. Hi, Laura. It's great to be back. Glad to have you. And Julie, with spring comes National Library Week. Can you tell us the purpose of National Library Week? Well, National Library Week has been going on for many years, mm -hmm. and um, it's celebrated across the United States and even internationally. Um, it's a, a week where we, you know, reflect on how great libraries are in our communities. Um, we're destination places. We provide great collections, wonderful programs uh, that really reach out to all ages in our community. And um, it's a time for us to celebrate. Um, I wore my reed vest today to remind me that really it is a lot of fun uh, that week. But it's not just the week. Um, here at the Novi Library, we actually will be celebrating all of the month of April. And we're looking for people to come in and decorate a door hanger and tell us what their favorite book is in our collection. And uh, the theme this year is you belong at the library. So we hope many people will belong and come and see us uh, throughout the month of April along with uh, you know every month that they visit us. But it's just a special time to really celebrate good books, great resources, and obviously a great place for people to, to come and, and so socialize and to, and to read. Yeah, and that's great. I think you mentioned, obviously, we have the Decorating the Door Hangers. Uh, do. National Library Week is April 8th through 14th. But I also know there's a lot of programs mm -hmm. that the library does. Can you maybe just share some of those programs sure. with us? We have, uh, actually, there's a lot of programming going on yes. the week of the 8th through the 14th. Um, we have a lot of programming uh, specific to computer uh, computer instruction so definitely make sure we check out you know you check out the website and and look for all those different classes but we're offering a number of classes um, basic word and and, inter and um, intermediate classes for our seniors um, we have story times going on all week those are fun for the young kids um, our English as a second language conversation group will be meeting and I think the the major program which comes at the very end of the week on the 14th of, of April which is a Saturday is our uh, Battle of the Books and that is a wonderful if people have not had the chance right. to attend a program like that I encourage them it's our fifth and sixth graders from our community they've been reading books for the past uh, few months now uh, different novels and what they're going to be doing is they're going to be answering questions about those so they're there it's a competition right and um, in the past we've had uh, 10 and 12 teams uh, the teams can be anywhere from four to six, four to six kids, um, and they really have a good time. They have a coach that they've been working with over the last couple of months, and they're really getting to know these books that they've been reading. So it's more than just reading it; it's getting to know, you know, a lot of factual information about the book so that they can answer some pretty unique questions. So that takes place on Saturday, the 14th. It will be at. Um, the Civic Center at the City Civic Center, and I hope that people will come out. We we typically see anywhere from 100, 150 people show up for that event and show their support and, and root on the kids as they answer those questions. So it should be a good time for everyone. Oh, it sounds like a great week, a great month, really. Yes. Uh, well, another great springtime event is the Book It Fundraiser. And this year it's on Friday, April 27th from 7 to 10 right here at the Novi Library. Correct. Can you share some information on sure. that event? Well, this is our second annual and mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited about it because last year when we debuted this fundraising opportunity, um, we raised just over $10,000, which was uh, wonderful for us. That money that we raised went towards our youth collections right. and we bought new materials uh, in the youth area. This year we're going to be raising money for our multimedia and people probably wonder well, what is multimedia? But those are um, our video game, our Blu-ray, and our DVD collections. And we know that we have a lot of digital use um, mm -hmm. in our community it's more than just books now nowadays and um, so this is an opportunity for us to build those collections as well we have a, a lot of fun lined up for that evening it's just three hours from 7 to 10 
right? It is for ages 21 and up. Um, we will have beverages for sale, beer and wine. Um, we will have entertainment. In fact, we're, um, we have an entertainer coming in who will be singing songs from the movies. And there will be contests, a silent and live auction, great food. And you mentioned Steve and Rocky's already, right. and I know you'll be talking to Steve. But a wonderful food provided by Steve and Rocky's. So it's, it really is just a fun night out. If you're looking for an inexpensive, and, the, and I say that because we wanted everyone to be able to, to come to the event, we're charging $20 for a single person and $35 for a couple. Um, cash, check, credit card can be accepted. And it really, we do, like I said, we have a good time. Well, super. Well, when are tickets available? They're, they're available now, so you can call. We're asking everyone to call our administration office. Um, we don't have the tickets available online, but to call the office at, or drop into the library, and our administration office can help people with those sales. We only have 200 tickets available, and I can tell you they are going quickly. So I do encourage people, if they if they are going to choose you know, that Friday night right. to spend it with us, that they call us quickly and, and reserve those tickets. Well, it sounds great. I guess, you know, quickly, um, you had touched upon Chef Steve, Steve Allen, and yes. yeah, we'll definitely be talking with him later in the broadcast. Right. And Steve and Rockies is one of the premier sponsors for this event. Who are the other sponsors? We have some wonderful sponsors that came in this year. Telecom Credit Union, Providence Park Hospital, 12 Oaks, and Global Office Solutions. Um, all of them gave generously and sponsored the event. So we're, we started out very well with their wonderful sponsorship and their support. And um, I, like I said, it's going to be a great evening for everyone. Yeah, I agree. Well, um, you know, again, it's a great way to have fun. It's a great way to support the library. And there's also something new coming on that I think is going to support a lot of the library initiatives in our historical realm. And that's really the new historical display case. Correct. And a lot of people aren't familiar with this. So I thought this would be a great opportunity no, to share some information on that, too. Perfect opportunity, Laura. Um, I'm really excited about this. Um, we have a local history room, right. which has a lot of local history um, collections in it. And we're building them as Nova is still new really in our community okay. as a community I should say but um, we we were approached by Hugh and Kathy Crawford they're wonderful um, supporters of our library and have lived in Novi for many years so historically they've you know they are right. special to us in that way and they have a special love of history as well um, they approached us last fall and Hugh was having a birthday and in lieu of gifts, they asked people who came to their wonderful event to make donations to our library. So the donations that were received due to that event went directly towards a new historical di display case. And the display case will be uh, unveiled um, the middle of April, and I hope people will come by and see the new case. Um, it will have a lot of different Novi history and artifacts. In fact, we're looking, um, by you and I talking today, I'm gonna put a plug out that people who might have small items they, that they wanna share with the library and wanna have on display, that they contact us. Um, we have now uh, have a volunteer position with Kathy Much, who's going to be our library historian. She will help us determine the different types of historical artifacts and, and um, papers and books that we might be putting on display over the next few years when, when this display takes off. The theme uh, to get us started for right. through the summer is Novi Then and Now, so you can imagine all of the different items and, and history pieces that we might be able to pull from the community and have available. But um, the items will be on display for about four months each time, and then we'll switch out uh, with different themes um, every four months or so. And we'll make sure that we put that information and engage and let people know what's coming ahead of time so they can be excited and, and be looking forward to something new in that display case when they visit the library. Oh, that sounds great. Well, and you know, Julie, I'm gonna keep with our spring theme, and I have one last question sure. to kind of ask you about is, you know, usually each spring we offer the mu museum adventure passes yes. and the park and read passes. We are going to be doing that again this year, right? We are. Good. And I'm very excited because they're already available. So starting April through September, um, patrons can come in and they can get a pass for a free day to go to some of the state parks that are here Wonderful. Um, in Michigan. And then the Museum Adventure Pass allows people admission into one, some of our wonderful museums that we right. have here in the Southeast Michigan area. So um, with your library card, that's all you need. Um, we have different passes 
you can look to see where your destination might be that you're interested in going. We have a kiosk that's in our lobby and that'll direct people as to what types of museums and, and parks that are available for them to visit. But you check it out, you know, on your library card, you get a week to use it. Um, I know now that they've actually gone online, so some right. of that can be done online in order for you to download and actually uh, get your ticket uh, and take it with you then and you don't even have to drop into the library necessarily so I encourage people if you're going to be staycationers or you know right. is what they're calling it if you're staying in the local area of Michigan this summer we've got some great things you know for the family to enjoy and we hope that you'll take advantage of it. That sounds great. Well, I hope everyone really finds a great reason to belong at the library this spring. Absolutely. And thank you so much for meeting with us today. And next up, we'll be seeing what's cooking with Chef Steve. Thank you. Maybe you see something suspicious, but you don't want to get involved. It's nothing, you think. Can you be sure? If you see something, say something. Report suspicious activity to local authorities. Welcome back to Beyond Books. As you can see, we're not at our usual studio, and we're not at the Novi Public Library either. We're at Stephen Rocky's Restaurant, right off of Grand River Avenue in downtown Novi. And I'm here with Chef Steve, Steve Allen, to talk about the value of good food and a good library in the community. Thank you, Steve, for having us come today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your restaurant? Certainly. Um, Stephen Rocky's, well, we were, we were open in 1998. And uh, we are on Grand River, a quarter mile east of Novi Road in the Novi Sun Center parking lot. And uh, it started out by myself, Steve Allen, and my business partner, Chuck Rocky Rockwitz. And uh, we wanted to open up a restaurant in the Novi community. We thought it would be a great place to, to entertain and serve people. And uh, so we found this location, which was a former Fuddruckers building. Okay that uh, was not doing as well and uh, as you can see we kind of totally redesigned it and put it together in our kind of fashion and the way that we wanted to do and and uh, we're open seven days a week and we've been open ever since and we're pretty happy and fortunate about it. Well we're happy you're here too. Well what can you tell us about the menu here at Stephen Rockies? Uh, well first of all it's 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 pretty diverse menu. There is a lot of uh, Different, different ingredients, uh, you know, like I, you know, I, I tell a lot of people the only thing that's frozen is the ice cubes and the ice cream. Okay. And we use everything fresh and we make everything from scratch. Uh, a lot of different seafood, different beef cuts, chicken, lamb, duck. I mean, we dabble kind of in anything, you know. When people ask me, well, what kind of restaurant are we? I, you know, I kind of just want to say we try and do good food. And whether it's uh, Asian or French or German or, you know, there's kind of something on the menu for pretty much anybody. So it's not your normal, you know, uh, type of restaurant where you get your burgers and your, you know, cop salads and stuff like right. that. We, we try to be a little bit different and not different for being different bad, but different good. Different good. Well, good. Now, besides Stephen Rocky's, you have other restaurants in the area too, correct? Yes. Yes. My partner, Rocky. Mm -hmm. He's had uh, Rockies in Northville, and that's on Seven Mile Road, and he's had that one now for going on 20 years. Wow. And five years ago, Rocky, myself, and a, and a third partner, his name is Dan, we opened a Rockies Rotisserie, and that's at Six Mile and Newburgh, and that's in the, oh boy, the Bushes Market, the mm -hmm. uh, Newburgh Plaza. Right. So I kind of forgot that one. <laughs> but uh, that's been going on for five years now, and that's a lot more simpler type of food, mostly carry out, but great rotisserie chicken, ribs, pastas, salads, those kind of things. Again, all made from scratch. 
and our kind of style. We taste, we taste everything. That sounds great. Well, kind of speaking that way, I mean, Stephen Rockies has won first place in the Michigan Culinary Food and Wine Extravaganza and has really had strong reviews from the Novi News, Gourmet Magazine, Hour Magazine, Metro Times. I mean, how are you able to achieve such high accolades and run such a successful restaurant like Stephen Rockies? I guess the biggest thing that we could say is we challenge ourselves every day. Okay. You know, our last meal is going to be our most critiqued, our best meal. So we're always striving to come up with some new ideas and pleasing people, like you said, you know. Without the people, we have nothing. So we know that, we understand that. We have 50 employees here, and they're all here because this is their livelihood. So that's why we're always, I guess, challenging ourselves to keep on, you know, growing. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm a pretty competitive kind of guy, so I don't want to, I don't want to slouch in, in this area in this because people here they know food mm -hmm. so that's why we keep on doing what we do oh, I love that that's great now I mean you've talked about the food and it's been nearly 15 years here in your site in Novi I mean it's obvious you have a strong commitment to this community and part of that commitment you know really Stephen Rockies has been a great supporter of the library over the last few years what made you decide to you know get involved with the library well, uh, we, we, you know, just like anybody else that is in the community, we try to be a part of that community, and we absolutely try and help everything and everybody that we possibly can. Obviously, the library is a very good cause, and we, you know, we'd love to be a part of it, and and just to make this area a little bit better. Yeah. Well, we couldn't agree more. Now. You know, at last year's Book It fundraiser, Stephen Rockies donated a really special dinner. Can you tell us a little bit about that donation for the auction last year? Uh, certainly. I, I believe, and don't quote me on this because I don't have that piece of paper with me, <laughs> but uh, I think it was dinner for eight. It sure was. And was it going to be at the restaurant or at the person's no, house? No, it was actually going to be cooked at home. Cooked at that person's house, whoever Correct. the winning person was. But yeah, it's basically a dinner for eight, and one of our chefs will come in and uh, cater a meal, multi-course meal for those eight, those seven other special people. Well, that sounds great, and that was a really generous thing to, you know, help the library with. And this year, you've really even expanded on that. This year, Stephen Rockies, Stephen Rockies is a major sponsor, and it's donating all the appetizers for the Book It event. Now, what's on the menu? Oh, that's, you know, that's kind of a secret. Okay, but well, we won't tell anyone. I think we're gonna do some, you know, uh, different pasta dishes and a couple chicken dishes. We'll have uh, a few di different little dessert th things. Yeah. Depending on how many people show up, which we hope a great deal, of course. And um, I think, again, we try to do a wide range of first, you know, make sure that there's something there for everyone. That sounds great. Now, I understand that Stephen Rockies is planning a remodel here in April. What yes. are you planning? Well, we're kind of going from the ceiling on down and okay. changing everything in between. So the ceiling, uh, all new colors are going to be introduced to the restaurant. As you can see, we got a lot of colors now, but we're changing the colors. We're going to subdue it a little bit. Okay. There's some areas in the restaurant that I think that is a little bit too crazy. You know, like in the back room where it's almost like a disco parlor and a, <laughs> a dating game walls. I, I always like to say. But we have new carpeting, new chairs, new fabric. Um, Quite a bit, in fact, you know, and I'm really, really excited about it. And and uh, April 1st is when we're supposed to be starting, and we'll see what happens. Another, it's going to take about two weeks. We will not be closed during Great. service. Okay. And we'll just, you know, just we'll do all the renovations at nighttime, and each morning will be like Christmas, and open up the presents and see what happens. Absolutely. Well, I guess, you know, kind of like construction, redesign, everything seems to be going on at once because you also got a lot of construction on Grand River right now. How is that going to impact business? Well, I mean, anytime that someone has to go through the uh, orange cones, I'm sure it's always a bother. But we, you know, rest assured, we're good to be open. There's access to Stephen Rockies. Uh, there'll be access off of Grand River and off of Novi Road. So you can come into the back parking lot. You can go into the front parking lot. Uh, Please bear with us. Uh, we're still going to be serving the same great food, whether we got construction or not. So, that sounds great, and everything just has been perfect. Um, 
it's been a pleasure meeting with you today pleasure and with really you. enjoying the sights and the delectable aromas here of the restaurant. So we really appreciate your ongoing support for the library and really hope to work with you again. So thank you so much. Well, Chef thank Steve. you for having us. Thank you. Now please stay tuned and we're going to discuss some great opportunities for teens at the library this spring. Thank you. Mom, can I have a dollar? I think my purse is upstairs on the bed. It's not here. Check the dining room. No, the upstairs closet. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Welcome back to the Novi Public Library and Beyond Books. Now being right next door to the Novi High School and conveniently located to many other high schools, middle schools, and even elementary schools, the Novi Public Library has worked really hard to meet the needs of our students' population. Now today I welcome one of the biggest proponents of our teens and tweens, our own Assistant Library Director, Margie Carp Overer. Hello, Margie. How <laughs> Hi, are you? Laura. I'm good. You're so glad to have you today. Thank you. Glad now, to be here. Are you really? Yes, I really okay. am. <laughs> <laughs> well, super. Well, why do you think the library is especially valuable to the community's teen and tween population? Well, you mentioned location, so that's mm -hmm. a, a strong reason why we feel that we need to make a library that they are comfortable with, whether we're right. talking about our high school students or Novi Meadows who can walk over here or ride their bikes or Parkview, any of our elementary schools or any of our schools actually, we did a very strong emphasis when we were talking about building this library to talk to our community and talk to all ages of the community, not just our voting people, but everyone. And we listened and tried to bring to the library things that would bring them to the library. Right. So after listening, we then implemented much of what was told to us. Um, and for the teens, we have on our second floor our NPL Teen Stop that has their resources, comfortable furniture that they like, um, and gaming stations which get used quite a bit. We have lots of group study rooms here for the kids to come, work in their groups, um, do any of the projects right. they need. The other thing that's wonderful is our resources. Our resources are really conducive to what they need so that they can excel and they can take this and whether it's career looking when they're at the edge of end of, um, of high school or ACT studies and with the computers and the resources and the Wi-Fi everywhere, this is a great place for them to study, hang out and feel comfortable. Yeah, those are all really important things. Now, are there any special library policies that pertain specifically, say, to teens or tweens using the library? We don't have any specific rules for that age group. We've got rules of conduct that we expect mm -hmm. our patrons to follow, and right. whether they are our seniors or our teens, we have the same expectations for all of our visitors. And that is primarily to use the library in the way that it was built to be used. Um, and some days are good <laughs> and some days are even better. Um, but we primarily focus on the respect of our patrons and those around us. So if anyone follows those rules of behavior, we're, we're very pleased. Um, no illegal, obviously, or destructive behavior is accepted. And the only kind of rule that is age is that we don't want anyone 10 years or younger to be in the library unattended. And we do sure. ask for the kids to be picked up about 10 minutes before closing. But nothing specifically for the teens or tweens, just please um, love this library and respect it and respect the others. Seems fair so. enough. Well, what does the library do to maintain safety, security, and comfort for our teens and tweens? Being a public building, safety is uh, a very, very important issue. Uh, and we do fortunately have lots of security cameras around for all of our safety. Uh, we've just installed some, some more, so we are monitoring it and are pleased to say we don't have any issues with that, but are prepared in case that, that were to come about. Um, and once again, uh, just encouraging good library behavior. And, and another thing too I, I wanted to mention is that I think it's really important that if one of our patrons 
does some, see something that they feel is a safety issue, they should come immediately to a staff member. Don't try to handle anything on their own. That's what we're here for and we want to help whether it's someone who has left a, a library bag unattended, which we don't encourage, they should come talk to us and we'll take care of it from there. That sounds great. <clears throat> now the library has a very active teen advisory board or tab. What does this group do? Um, this is a group that's been around for a couple of years uh, and it started out where the teens wanted to come and tell us their thoughts and of course being the Novi Library, we wanted to hear their thoughts. And then we took it a step further and decided, you know what, let's get organized and become a group. So we call them our tabbers, our teen advisory board. It's anyone who would like to be a part in grades 9 through 12. We encourage them. We always have openings. They don't have to start in September. They just hear about it now and want to become a member. Fantastic. So we meet regularly. Our next meeting is May 18th and we will actually be installing new officers so it's a wonderful time to get started. What the tabbers do is, like I said, they give us their opinions and it's opinions on the way the library runs, uh, programs that they would like to see, resources they would like us to have for them. Um, and it's a wonderful, wonderful group, extremely um, conscious of what the other kids in, in their schools are thinking. Um, so anybody in Novi between grades 9 and 12, fabulous. So they help us with programs. They'll either, um, they'll also help us with flyers. They help us tremendously in the summer reading with our teen volunteer right, program, right. which is coming up right now. So sign up for that. Um, Battle of the Books that uh, Mrs. Farkas mentioned, they help us with that. Anything that we need, we can just ask them about. And another thing we're pitching is Memorial Day parades coming in. We'd love to have our teens walk with us on that on the too. Parade. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. And to do that, they could just call <coughs> library administration and yes. let us know? Please. Super. Well, I know the teens are also working on a new project, the Community Clothing Drive, and that runs from May 14th through the 19th, right? Right. Can you tell us a little more? Yeah. Well, when meeting with our teens, and we also have two teen reps that um, participate in our library board uh, meetings each month, that's Tori Yu and Nishant Kumar. Uh, we were all talking and decided we are so fortunate here in Novi got a wonderful school system, a beautiful community, and a lot of blessings that we have here, besides, of course, our Novi Library. But we wanted to do something back for the community to give back, and just our way of saying thank you. So we looked around and saw what the schools were doing so that we didn't duplicate um, their ideas, and we decided to come up with a teen clothing drive. So this is our first one. We're hoping that it will be an annual event, but we're asking the community to bring gently used and cleaned clothing, no uh, restrictions on size, and we'll have a bin in our outer lobby from May 14th to May 19th. People can just drop it off. They can get a slip for tax deductions if they wish. Uh, and then the tabbers, my teen reps, Novi uh, Interact and Wild Lake Western Interact are going to help us. We're going to sort everything and then give it to Holy Family and then they will distribute it to the community. Wonderful, wonderful. <clears throat> well, are there any other upcoming events that teens should know about it that are at the library this spring? Yes, and I should also mention that Jennifer Preston and Suzanne Carpenter are the teen advisors, so they are a wonderful source to, to just get information. Like, wow, this sounds something I might like to do but I need to find out more they can always contact me or Jennifer or Suzanne we we'd love to have as much um, extra individuals coming to help us as possible what else do we have coming I said the May 18th we have our annual or our next tab meeting and mm -hmm. that will be at 315 to elect new officers um, Julie mentioned about the Battle of the Books coming up, which is great. We have an Animanga Club on May, tw uh, May 2nd. We will have our meeting rooms open um, when the high school students are studying hard for their finals so that they can come work on their group projects, um, test each other, do whatever they need. That. That'll be open on May 7 and 8. 
And for those people who are thinking ahead toward college, we will have a Write Your Way to College Admissions and Essay Writing Workshop, and that's on May 9th. And should I plug that Memorial Day Parade one more time? I think you need to. <laughs> and we've got a Memorial Day Parade um, on Monday, May 28th, that I'd love to see as many um, of our youth walking with us. And Laura will be walking with me too, so it'll be a good day. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you so much, Margie. It sounds like a really busy spring for us yes. and for our teen patrons. And I really want to thank you our previous guests as well, Chef Steve Allen, Julie Farkas, and really encourage anyone who wants to find out more of anything that was discussed in today's broadcast to go ahead and check out our website. That's www.novilibrary.org or give us a call at 248-349-0720 or just stop by the library. See what a great library we have. Check out our resources, our programs, and really talk to the librarians and there's so much to learn. And it's all beyond books. Thank you.